Hello, uh, I am going to give you a few lectures on oscillations and waves. And what this kind of motion, oscillatory motion, and wave motion, what kind of motion is this? We are going to look into that and how we describe it mathematically and where does it occur. So, oscillatory motion. comes in a class of motion called periodic motion. So, let us understand what does periodic motion mean. Periodic motion is something is a motion that repeats itself. So, let us understand what does that mean. If a particle is going around in a circle, so let us say it started from here, it goes around in a circle and then keeps repeating it and every time it goes around it does the same motion, then the motion is periodic. Let us see if I want to calculate the x component or the y component of this motion, what does it look like? So, if the particle is going around in a circle and let us say it covers a distance theta t in time t, right, starting from here on the x axis. then x t would be a projection of this on the x axis, this will be x t and this would be if the radius of the circle is r, r cosine of theta t and similarly, the y component of this motion y t y of t is going to be r sin of theta t. And suppose this completes an entire circle in time capital T, all right. So, it comes back in time capital T, then you can see x starts from some distance r, initial distance if it starts from this point is r, then it changes in a certain manner and when it reaches here at the upper point, which I am doing number 2, this was number 1, started from number 1, reaches number 2, then x starts becoming negative, becomes minus r at number 3, goes up, becomes 0 again at number 4, number 3, number 4 and could do something like this back to number 1. And if this motion repeats itself over time that means theta t is going to be exactly the same after it has completed one cycle, then the motion is going to be periodic. So, if I were to plot it carefully, let me show it here, here is x and y axis this is the particle going around, the radius is r, I am plotting x t. I plot it in a certain way, but it could be any general function. However, it repeats itself exactly in the same manner, then it is a periodic motion with time period being from here to the point it reaches point 1 again. So, let me show this, this was point 1, this was point 2, this was point 3 maximum, this is point 
0.4 and this is 0.5 which is again 0.1 and the motion repeats itself. If theta is in general changing very arbitrarily then the motion would not be periodic. However, if it repeats itself after a certain time it is periodic. It could so happen that the particle goes around and after it completes two circles once and twice then the motion repeats itself then the periodicity of the time period would be twice as large. But the main point is that if the motion repeats itself if a motion repeats itself after time t it has to be exactly the same then the motion is periodic with time period t. Other examples of this would be examples of periodic motion earth's rotation on its axis right and this motion repeats after t roughly equals 24 hours other example would be moon going around the earth and this motion repeats itself after roughly 29 days. So, this is a periodic motion with time 20 time period 29 days or the earth going around the sun with time period roughly equals 365 days or a year and the motion repeats after itself after that much time. So, these are some examples of periodic motion. So, what I have defined for you is time period which is t whatever units we use a related quantity is going to be frequency and what frequency means is in per unit time how many times the motion repeats itself. So, frequency is usually is denoted by f and this is 1 over t. In time t the motion repeats itself. So, obviously, in per unit time it is 1 over t times the motion takes place right. So, this is a frequency. Third, we also define something called the angular frequency, meaning of it would be clear after some time and this is 2 pi times f usually denoted by omega and this is 2 pi over t right. So, this is the angular frequency. Time could be given as seconds then frequency is going to be per second sometimes also written as hz or what it means is hertz. If time is in hours then frequency is per hour and time is in days then frequency is going to be per day. So, we talked about I will go back to now the motion of a particle in a circle and I will now specialize to motion where the speed of the particle 
is constant, sometimes also called uniform. What it means is that when this particle is going around in a circle, its speed here is v is the same all the time. And therefore, if the circle radius is r, the time taken for the particle to go around is going to be 2 pi r divided by v and this is the time period. You can see it for yourself, if the speed is uniform, the motion is going to repeat itself after the particle reaches its initial point, it is going to repeat itself. So, time it takes to go around once is going to be the time period and that is 2 pi r over v. The frequency f of motion is going to be 1 over t which is v over 2 pi r, v over r I am going to call omega which is angular frequency divided by 2 pi. Now, you understand the meaning of angular frequency. It takes time t to go around the angle 2 pi, right. So, angular speed is nothing but 2 pi over t and that is the same as angular frequency and which is nothing but 2 pi and f. So, we have the, all these things are related as you can see. Now, why this motion is interesting is because if I look at this motion, a particle going around in a circle of radius r with uniform speed v, then the angle it covers in time t, the angle is going to be measured in radians as you can see earlier I said is 2 pi when it goes around once in full circle this theta, theta is going to be equal to this distance here is going to be v times t, this radius is r. So, theta is going to be v times t the arc length divided by r. We can, you can see this omega times t which is a well known relationship and therefore, x t the x component here is going to be equal to r cosine of omega t, y t is going to be r sine of omega t. So, in this case if I plot the motion, so let me show this to you again, I am considering the case where the particle is going around in a circle right of radius r this speed is v and this angle theta is omega t where omega is v over r, x as a function of time is r cosine of omega t and if I were to plot x t versus t at t equal to 0, the displacement is r, it comes down as a cosine curve, goes to 0, that is let me show this again by positions, position 1, position 2 is going to be here, position 1 is here and then x becomes negative and at position 3 is maximum negative. So, it goes like this, this is position 3 and after this the x starts reducing again becomes less negative, it comes here at position 4 becomes 0 again and then goes up and back to 5 or 1. So, this entire time that it takes to come back is time period t and this is a cosine curve. So, it is x t equals r cosine of omega t. 
Similarly, if I were to plot y t, right, if I were to plot y t, this is going to be r sin of omega t and if I were to plot it at this point position 1, y 0, this is position 1 and then it goes up, reaches the maximum y equal to r at position 2, comes down and then goes up again, negative and then goes up again. This is position 3, position 4, position 5 and then it repeats. So, this is also periodic with the same time period this point is supposed to be right here. This is this is position 5, this is supposed to be same same point t. Okay. So, it repeats itself. Now, this is a very specific kind of motion. So, what is happening here is if a particle is going around in a circle with uniform speed, then x t is equal to r cosine of omega t, y t is equal to r sin of omega t moves around with exactly one frequency, right. This is called simple. harmonic motion all right so this this is motion which is simple harmonic it contains a, a a cosine omega t or sine omega t time dependence and this is going to be the focus of our study in these lectures. But before that, I just want to give you some more periodic motions and how to represent them on the displacement versus time graph motion and their representation on displacement versus time graph. Okay, so, let us see look at that. Number 1, let me take a particle which can move along the x axis. So, let us say this is the x axis from 0 to L and then there are these some hard walls at these positions. So, that this particle goes from here with a uniform speed v goes here, hits this wall and immediately returns back. So, you can see it is going to be going back and forth and repeating its motion. So, this is a periodic motion. Let us see how does x versus t graph look for this. So, if I were to plot x t versus t and let us say t equal to 0, it was at this point on the left hand x equal to 0, then x increases, goes to uniformly goes to a value L. So, this is L and as soon as it reaches here, it starts coming back. When it starts coming back with the same speed without losing energy, it goes down, x it decreases, goes to 0, right and then the motion again repeats itself. You see again that motion is repeating itself, it is exactly the same triangle that keeps coming back again and this time from here to here is going to be the time period. What is t equal to? The total distance travelled is 2 L divided by V, that is going to be the time period. Let us take the second example, a ball is released from height h comes down and without losing energy it bounces back. So, it goes up to height h again and then it comes down and goes up and this motion keeps on repeating. This is also a periodic motion because exactly the same motion is taking place after certain time. 
and if I were to plot the height of the ball y t versus the time t, it starts at a height h, comes down and you know from your equations that the height is going to be like this because I am going to have y t equals h minus one half g t square. So, it looks like this. Now, it hits y equal to 0 and starts moving up is exactly the same speed, goes up, goes to height h and then again it starts coming down. So, you see motion repeats after this much time, this is the time period. How long did the ball take to come down? Well, we know that y equal to 0 implies t equals 2 h over g square root, but that is not the time period because that is the time it took to reach this point here where I am making a big blob. So, total time period t is going to be twice as much which is 2 square root of 2 h over g that is the time period. Whenever the motion is periodic, all the related quantities are also periodic. So, what we have done in the examples I have shown you, we have shown the displacement of a particle x t which is periodic that means, this is changing. I am also giving you all sorts of words changing periodically with time period t. So, in the first example, let me just go back again. We took a particle which was going back and forth between two rigid walls and x t plotted against time looked like x was increasing, went all the way up to l, came back, x was increasing, came back. I want to show you now how other quantities are going to look like. So, suppose I were to plot its velocity versus time. Right. Well, I am saying it velocity because I am going to take negative and positive both. Now, as the particle moved up to this point, capital T by 2, it was moving with positive velocity and the velocity was certain value v. As soon as it reached this point, the other wall, it got hit and it started moving the other way. So, velocity became negative and then it came here. This was the velocity from this point onwards up to this point and then the velocity became positive again up to this point. and then it became negative again. Sorry, it is red color up to this point. So, velocity of this particle going back and forth between two walls is like this. This I am showing with a dotted line, it is not well defined, then again like this here, then the dotted line, then like this dotted line like this. And you can see that after time period t, the velocity is repeating itself. So, velocity is also a periodic function of time. So, if x t is periodic, so is the velocity and this is given as d x by d t, slope of x with respect to time that is also periodic. So, what I have shown you in this example, again 
particle going back and forth between x equals 0 and x equals L. I have shown you x curve which I will quickly plot now like this. I have shown you the velocity curve or let me put here x t versus t. I have shown you the velocity versus time curve which looks like this. And so, what about the acceleration? Let us plot the acceleration also. You see, when the particle was moving with uniform speed, the acceleration is 0, and then suddenly it has a huge negative acceleration so that the velocity becomes negative, it is 0 again then a positive acceleration and 0 again, negative acceleration 0 again and so on, positive acceleration 0 again, negative acceleration and 0 again. What you can see is this acceleration is also repeating itself. From here it becomes negative, positive and then 0 again, this is the time period. In real life, when this ball hits, it is going to be squeezed a bit. This is for a short time, there is going to be some force which we are showing that short time to be roughly 0, but in real life it is going to be slightly different. The actual curve may look something like this 0, then it hits the wall, then it hits the wall, gets a huge acceleration for some time and huge acceleration for some time. The actual curve may look something like this. Nonetheless, the point is that even acceleration is repeating. So, x t is periodic velocity v t is periodic with the same period and so is the acceleration. I will let you think what this integral if I were to take an integral from time t up to this time t equal to 0 to say this time of the acceleration a t 0 2 let us say this is t 1 t 1 d t what it would be. I will give you the answer, the answer would be minus 2 v. You figure it out why it is so, it is basically related to that the acceleration a right a t let me write it on this side a t uh, keep writing on the right hand side this is x t the next point is v t is nothing but d x by d t and the acceleration a t is d v by d t which is d 2 x by d t square and this is what this is what leads to this integral. Let us look at the next example that I did and that was a ball dropped from height h and bouncing without losing any energy and in this case when I plotted x t versus t or height y t versus t it looked like this. Where this up to this point is the time period. Let us now plot as velocity also v t versus t and you know from your daily or earlier exercises in this case it started with 0 velocity and out here by the time it reaches this point let me show it by black 
the velocity is negative. So, this velocity goes like this and keeps on increasing up to this point. Then the ball bounces and its velocity just changes direction and therefore, it becomes positive the same magnitude and then it again it starts slowing as it moves up velocity decreases reaches 0 when the ball reaches the highest point because it stops momentarily and then it comes down again. and then the motion repeats itself and so on. This is the velocity curve. So, you can see that velocity goes up to this point and then changes. It is like this and the time period time over which it repeats itself is from here to here. What about the acceleration? Again, if I were to plot acceleration is minus g up to this point, it minus g throughout, minus g, but at this point the body changes velocity. So, it goes up a huge acceleration in the positive direction and then minus g again, all the way up to this point changes again all the way up to this point changes again and this is the time period. You see motion is repeating itself, so it does not matter how I write the time period, I can write it between these two points, these two points and so on. In real life again the acceleration would look something like this, it will go like this, goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, this will be real life acceleration. So, peaks are not that sharp, they are spread a bit and if I, if I were to take the integral of time let us say t 1 to t 2, just like earlier integral t 1 to t 2 a t d t would be equal to 2 v 0, where v 0 is the velocity when it hits the ground which is going to be 2 square root of 2 g h and all this follows from that this is of course, the first term is y t, the second term is v t which is d y t over d t and the third term acceleration a t is d v t by d t which is same as d 2 y over d t square. So, if you integrate this equation you get this answer. The third motion which I said we will be interested in more other lectures that follow is the simple harmonic motion. Which we said is nothing but if I take a particle going around in a circle of radius r, then x t which is equal to r cosine of omega t, right. This x t is called simple harmonic motion because it contains the term cosine omega t or equivalently I could also call its component y t which is r sine of omega t which is also called the simple harmonic motion. If I were to plot x t versus t, it looks like a cosine curve with this maximum displacement being r or minus r. The corresponding velocity v t versus t is the initially slope is almost 0. So, it is going to be 0. However, as time increases as the particle goes around like this, is going in the negative x direction. So, velocity increases and it reaches a maximum here. You can see at this point 2 is maximum, then it starts decreasing and becomes 0 again 
at this point. So, the velocity looks like this and then it reaches a maximum positive here. So, let me show the corresponding point. This is point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4. This is point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4 and then zero again at point 1 or point 5 and then it starts repeating itself. Vt here is dxt over dt which is nothing but minus r sin of omega t, there is a omega here, minus omega r sin of omega t. How about the acceleration? Acceleration at point 1 is you can see the change is very large, so it is going to be negative and then it becomes 0 at point 2, so 1, 2 becomes positive large at this point, largest at this point and then goes down like this, okay and this becomes the time period, this is the time period. Acceleration a t is given as d v over d t which comes out to be minus omega square r cosine of omega t which is nothing but minus omega square x t, okay. So, acceleration goes up, comes down, so it is exactly negative of this, it is negative multiplied by omega square r of course, because this largest value is going to be omega square r. So, it is multiplied by sorry omega square times x t and change of sign, that is the acceleration. So, let us see what it means. In simple harmonic motion, x t has been given as r cosine of omega t, the corresponding speed or velocity is nothing but d x d t which is minus omega r sin of omega t and the acceleration a t which is nothing but d v over d t which is same thing as d 2 x over d t square is nothing but minus omega square x. I could also have written this whole thing as a motion along the y axis. So, I could have written y t is equal to r sin of omega t corresponding velocity v t is d y over d t which would be omega r cosine of omega t. Interesting thing is that the acceleration which is dv over dt which is nothing but d2y over dt square is it still comes out to be minus omega square y. That is it is again minus omega square times the displacement or in general I can write a motion xt given as a constant a cosine of omega t plus some other constant b sin of omega t, then the velocity t would be equal to dx over dt which is minus omega a sin of omega t plus omega times b cosine of omega t and the acceleration a t which is dv over dt which will be minus omega square a cosine of omega t minus omega square b sine of omega t which is again minus omega square x t. So, what you see is that whether I take motion to be purely cosine, purely sine or a combination of this, the acceleration comes out to be minus omega square x t and that is a typical sign of simple harmonic motion. In other words, if I have an equation x double dot which is nothing but d 2 x by d t square, if this is equal to minus some constant c times x where c is a positive number, then I am inverting the whole argument now. 
I came from x derived the acceleration now I am going to go backwards then x dot t is going to be of the form that was given and x t is going to be if I integrate this of the form a cosine of root c t plus b sine of root c t. I can write x dot t as some coefficient a 1 cosine of root c t plus b 1 sine of root c t. So, earlier I showed you that if a particle is moving around in a circle right uniformly that means its angular speed or v is constant then the motion comes out to be its x or y component motion x component of the motion y component of the motion comes out to be a combination of either pure cosine omega t or sin omega t or in general when I combine the two it is a co combination of the two. The important thing is in this motion is that the acceleration comes out to be exactly minus omega square times the displacement. Let us understand that. So, when a particle is moving around in a circle, if it is at this point here, the only acceleration it has is centripetal acceleration, which you know is v square over r or omega square r that is the magnitude. And if I take its components, its x component is going to be this in this direction. If this is omega t, this is omega t, you can see this is nothing but minus omega square r cosine of omega t, which is nothing but minus omega square x. Similarly, the y component of the acceleration is going to be minus omega square r sine of omega t, which is minus omega square y t. So, the acceleration in this case, the x and y component which show the simple harmonic motion, the corresponding acceleration is nothing but minus omega square times that displacement and that is simple. Harmonic motion. So, simple harmonic motion is nothing but a very specific case of periodic motions which of which I gave you several examples earlier. So, let us now solve a couple of problems, uh, one involving a periodic function and the other one where we calculate the period of a particle performing uh, periodic motion. So, in the first problem, a function given as a function of time is equal to cosine of 2 pi t plus cosine of 3 pi t plot the function and find its period. So, let us see how this function looks. If I were to look at cosine of 2 pi t, right, this has a period of t equals 1. How do I know that? Because cosine of 2 pi t at t equal to 0 is 1 and next becomes 1 is at t equals 1 because then it becomes cosine of 2 pi right and cosine of 3 pi t at t equal to 0 is 1 and cosine of 3 pi t at t equals 2 thirds is again equals cosine of 2 pi. So, its time period is so 2 thirds. What is the time period of the two functions together when they are added together? I could plot the two functions. So, cosine 
cosine of 2 pi t is going to look like this where the period is 1. So, this is t equals 1 and cosine of 3 pi t is going to look like its period is 2 thirds. So, this is 0 0.5, this is here. So, it is going to look like this and the net result is the sum of 2. It is not very obvious what the period is going to look like, what the net function is going to look like, but if you just play around what you are going to get, it is going to look like something like this and you can see this is going to be the period. It is not very obvious what the period is going to be. So, for that I am going to play a trick and write f t equals cosine of 2 pi t plus cosine of 3 pi t as cosine of 2 pi plus 3 pi by 2 t plus 3 pi minus 2 pi divided by 2 t that is cosine 3 pi plus cosine of 2 pi plus 3 pi over 2 t minus 3 pi minus 2 pi over 2 t and that is cosine 2 pi t right. So, this is cosine of 2 pi t and this one is cosine of 3 pi t and therefore, this becomes cosine of 5 pi by 2 t plus pi by 2 t plus cosine of 5 pi by 2 t minus pi by 2 t and you add them together and you are going to get 2 cosine of 5 pi by 2 t cosine of pi by 2 t. That is your function and now you can find the period easily. So, f at 0 is 2 times 1 times 1 which is 2 and I want to find at what time t it is 2 again. So, 2 times cosine of 5 pi t by 2 cosine of pi by 2 t and you notice f t is equal to 2 cosine of 5 pi by 2 t times cosine of pi by 2 t. So, t equals 2 gives f 2 equals 2 cosine 5 pi times cosine of pi and both are minus 1 which gives you 2 again. So, it is repeating after t equals 2. Notice that is the smallest number t equals 2 that it repeats itself over. So, time period of this function is 2 and that is the answer. For the second problem, I am going to take a particle moving along the x axis in a potential which is let us say 1 half m k x where m is the mass of the particle, k is a constant. and on this side it is 1 half m k x, x equals 0. So, potential it is moving in v x is equal to 1 half 
m k x for x greater than 0 or equal to 0 and is equal to minus 1 half m k x for x less than equal to 0. In short, the potential can also be written as 1 half m k modulus of x. You can see if I take a particle and leave it from one side, it is going to come down, go up again, come down, go up again and is going to perform a periodic motion. So, a particle with energy E is going to perform a periodic motion. Notice that the motion is going to be periodic, but not simple harmonic motion because for simple harmonic motion, you need the potential to be of the kind 1 half k x square because the force is linear. So, for simplicity, I am going to take E equals 1 half m v 0 square. So, this immediately tells you, this immediately tells you that v 0 is the speed when v x is equal to 0. Why? By energy conservation, E equals 1 half m v square that is the kinetic energy plus 1 half m k mod x. When mod x is 0, potential is 0, the 1 half m v square is going to be total energy. So, v naught is the speed when the potential is 0 and all the energy is kinetic. So, what we have now is that 1 half m v 0 square is equal to 1 half m v square plus 1 half m k mod x. I can cancel half m all throughout and I have v square equals v naught square minus k mod x. Now, as this particle performs motion back and forth, at any x, the velocity v at x is given as square root of v naught square minus k mod x. Therefore, if it travels a distance dx, the time taken is equal to only for traveling distance dx, the time taken is v x, which is going to be dx over square root of v naught square minus k mod x. All right. Let us see now, the farthest, the farthest that the particle goes to, it travels between these two points, the highest point the rightmost point and the leftmost point, at these points the velocity is 0. So, when v is 0, right, x gives you that point. So, v is 0 implies 1 half m v 0 square equals 1 half m k mod x, half m half m cancels and mod x equals v naught square over k are the two points where it reflects. So, the higher point is v naught square over k and the left most point is v naught minus v naught square over k. So, now it is clear that the particle is performing motion between minus v naught square by k and v naught square over k and the time taken from minus v naught square over k to v naught square over k is this and this is going to be one half the time period because it is time taken from one side to the other and the total time taken would be exactly the same when it goes back. So, the time period divided by 2 is the time it takes from leftmost point to the rightmost point and this is going to be minus v naught square over k to 0 dx over square root of v naught square minus k mod x which for x less than 0 is plus k x plus 0 to v naught square over k 
dx over v naught square minus k x square root. So, we have figured out that the time period t by 2 is equal to minus v naught square over k to 0 dx over square root of v naught square plus k x plus 0 to v naught square over k dx over square root of v naught square minus k x. You can simplify this further in this integral, the first integral take y to be minus x or x to be minus y. So, dx is minus dy. Then you get t by 2 equals integral with a minus sign dy over square root of v naught square minus k y and this is minus v naught square by k will become plus v naught square by k to 0 plus the second term remains the same 0 to v naught square over k dx over square root of v naught square minus k x which we can write as plus 0 to v naught square over k dy over square root of v naught square minus k y plus 0 to v naught square over k dx or dy does not matter because this is variable over which we are integrating. So, this t by 2 therefore is 2 times 0 to v naught square over k dy over square root of v naught square minus k y. Now, the integral is very simple you take y equals v naught square over k sin square theta therefore, dy is 2 v naught square over k sin theta cos theta d theta and the limits are from 0 to pi by 2. So, t by 2 becomes 2 times 0 to pi by 2 dy which is 2 v 0 square over k sin theta cosine theta d theta divided by v naught cosine of theta. So, you get 4 v naught over k this cosine theta cancels integral 0 to pi by 2 sin theta d theta which is nothing but 4 v naught over k and therefore, the time period is 8 v naught over k that is the answer and frequency of motion is going to be k over 8 v 0. In the next lecture, I am going to be focusing more on simple harmonic motion, look at this equation of motion based on what we have learnt so far.